So we know what this Gibbs free energy tells us. If some process has a negative delta G, then that process will occur spontaneously. If another process has a positive delta G, that process will not occur spontaneously. So using that, let's look at this example. Let's say we have this cell, and let's say we have this sodium outside of the cell at a concentration of 10 molar. However, let's say inside of the cell we have a smaller concentration of sodium at 1 molar. Due to these concentration gradients, does it make sense that sodium will spontaneously enter inside of the cell? Well, yeah, if we were to create a channel to allow these sodium ions to enter inside of the cell, that should occur spontaneously due to these concentration gradients. The higher concentration of sodium would flow inside of the lower concentration. So sodium entering inside of the cell should be spontaneous with the negative delta G. And we can find the delta G of that process of sodium entering inside of the cell using this equation. R just being the ideal gas constant, T is the temperature of the system, and this is the natural log of the concentration of sodium inside of the cell divided by the concentration of sodium outside of the cell. And of course, we're interested if sodium entering inside of the cell is spontaneous, so of course these would be the concentrations of sodium. So now if we were to solve this delta G, again, R is just the ideal gas constant, which is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. T is the temperature, and again, in physiological conditions, it's normally 310 Kelvin. Then this would just be the natural log of the concentration inside, which is 1 molar, divided by the concentration outside, which is 10 molar. So if we were to plug this into the calculator, we would get a value of roughly around negative 5900 joules. We would get this many joules per mole. But again, this exact value isn't important. The point is we get a negative delta G, which makes sense. It makes sense that due to these concentration gradients, sodium should spontaneously enter inside of the cell. And again, so that's why we get a negative delta G. And something important to realize is this form of the equation where we could have the concentration inside divided by the concentration outside, so Xi above Xo, this will specifically tell us the delta G of sodium entering inside of the cell. If that is spontaneous, if sodium entering inside of the cell is spontaneous, it does this form of the equation with Xi over Xo doesn't tell us about sodium leaving the cell if that's spontaneous. It tells us specifically this form of the equation specifically tells us sodium entering inside of the cell if that's spontaneous. And again, we see due to the concentration gradients it should so it, that makes sense and that's why we got a negative delta G however now let's look at this voltage if we have a negative voltage inside of the cell and a positive sodium ion does it make sense that due to this voltage should the sodium spontaneous enter inside of the cell well yeah this also due to this voltage it also should be spontaneous this also should get a, a driving force of sodium entering inside of the cell because if we have a positive sodium ion and a negative voltage they should attract this negative voltage should attract sodium ions so should this should have a negative delta g and we can solve that ne that delta g using this equation where z is just the valency so sodium has a valency of positive one if we were dealing with potassium uh, maybe chloride that would have a valency of negative one if we were dealing with calcium, we would have a valency of positive 2. So this Z term is just the valency. And sodium, sodium has a valency of positive 1, so we would plug in a positive 1. So this would be positive 1. F is just Faraday's constant. And really, all it is is just 95000 coulombs. F, Faraday's constant, is just a certain amount of charge. It's just a certain amount of coulombs. How much? The amount of charge in one moles of electrons. That's what Faraday's constant is. It's, it's how, many char, how, much, how many coulombs there is in one mole of electrons. And one moles of electrons has 95000 coulombs. So that's what Faraday's constant is. 95000 coulombs. It's how many coulombs there is in one moles of electrons. And then Vm is just the voltage. It's just the voltage. So again, so negative 70. And then again, let's do times 10 to the 3 because this gives a millivolts. So let, let's convert it to volts, to normal volts. And now if we were to plug this into the calculator, we would get a value of roughly around negative 6500 joules per mole joules per mole. So now we get a negative delta G. Then that makes sense. If we have a positive sodium entering into a negative voltage, due to this, this voltage, should, we should have a spontaneous driving force. So the sodium should spontaneously enter, so we, so we should get a negative uh, delta G. So now that we know these two pieces of the puzzle, we, we know the driving force due to the concentration gradients, and we know the driving force due to the voltage, now we can find the overall driving force. Overall, keeping to account the concentration gradients and the voltage, should sodium enter inside of the cell spontaneously? And we can determine this just using the simple equation. 
the overall delta G of sodium entering equals the delta G due to the voltage plus the delta G due, due to the concentration gradient. It's these two delta Gs that contribute to the overall delta G. And again, we know energy is additive. We know energy is additive. We, we can add energies. That's why we, we add these. We can add these energies. And, and delta Gs are additive. So therefore, we could find the overall delta G if we know the, the favorability due to the voltage and the favorability due to the concentration gradients. And if we were to add these two values, if we were to plug in all these values, we would get a delta G of roughly, of roughly around negative 1,200 joules per mole. And again, a, a negative 1,200 joules per mole. So we would get a very negative delta G, and that makes sense. Sodium entering inside of the cell should be very negative. This should be a very negative delta G. Because again, there's a concentration gradient pushing sodium in, and there's a voltage pushing sodium in. So therefore, this should have a very negative delta G. We should have a negative delta G, a, a very large negative delta G. So this explains the energetic of ion transport, but let's do a different example. Let's say we have this situation where we have a negative ion, and let's say we have one molar concentration outside and one, 10 molar concentration inside. So now in this situation, due to the concentrations, should chloride want to enter spontaneous? We know what this equation tells us. When Xi is over XO, it specifically tells us the delta G of this ion entering, if that is spontaneous. So we're asking, will chloride spontaneously enter due to these concentration gradients? And if we were to plug in these values, if we were to plug in Xi over XO and plug in all these values, we would actually see we would have a positive delta G. We would get a positive delta G of roughly around positive 6500 joules per mole. And this makes sense. This should be a positive delta G. This shouldn't, due to the concentration gradients, this shouldn't be spontaneous. We have a high concentration inside and a low concentration in, uh outside so therefore it does it shouldn't spontaneously enter in fact it should spontaneously leave so therefore entering should have a positive delta g remember that's what this equation tells us this form of the equation tells us entering if entering is spontaneous and again we got a positive delta g so we know entering will not be spontaneous due to the concentration gradients but how about due to the voltages Due to the voltages, will this be spontaneous? Well, let's think about it. We have a negative chloride ion and a negative voltage. So this should not spontaneously enter. It, it, if this is negative inside, it doesn't make sense that this negative ion would want to enter. In fact, the ion would want to leave. This ion would want to leave. So we know this equation tells us entering if that is spontaneous. And again, we would see, we would plug in a negative one valency and we would plug in a negative voltage so negative multiplied by negative would give us a positive. So we would have a positive delta G. And if you were to plug in the values, you would have a positive delta G of roughly around 6.5. And in fact, this was actually 5.5900. Uh, this was positive. And again, this was positive 6.5. Uh, or 6. This was positive 6. 6500 zero, zero joules per mole. But the point is that this was a positive delta G. This was a positive delta G because, again, this wasn't spontaneous. Due to the voltages, we had a negative wanting it to enter in a negative. So that should not be spontaneous. So this should give us a positive uh, delta G. This should not occur spontaneous. So therefore, if we wanted to find the overall spontaneity of this chloride entering inside of the cell, we, we would get a very positive delta G. We could add this delta G, add it to this delta G, and we would get a very positive delta G of roughly around 1,200, 12,000 joules per mole. And again, this makes sense. The, the, the concentration is unfavorable and the voltage is unfavorable. So this should be very unfavorable. So this should give us a very positive delta G. So now that we know that, let, let, let's think about something. So again, and normally the way cells occur, normally, and, and again, it's a little more complex, but normally in a normal cell, what's going on is we have a high concentration of sodium outside and a low concentration inside. So that's the normal conditions of a cell. High concentration of sodium outside and a low, little concentration of sodium inside. And we normally have a negative voltage inside. So that's the normal situation of a cell. So now if we were to open a, a sodium channel, what should happen? Well, due to the concentration gradients and due to the voltage, we should have that sodium enter inside of the cell. However, as those positive sodium ions enter inside of the cell, it will get more positively charged inside of the cell.
If originally we were at negative 70 millivolts, however, as more positive ions enter inside of the cell, it would get more positive. It would maybe get to negative 20 millivolts. As more positive sodium ions enter, it will get more positive. And then as more sodium enter, it will get more positive, maybe at 20, 20, positive 20 millivolts. And then again, more, because we have this huge concentration gradient, sodium will keep on entering eventually until it gets so positive till eventually it would get positive 55 millivolts. And then once so much positive sodium ions had, have entered and it, it's become positive 55 millivolts, it's become so positive that now it'll, it's so positive that it'll drop some sodium outside. And now the driving, the initial driving force entering will equal the driving force leaving because it's become so positive. So we reach an equilibrium. The driving inside due to the concentration gradients equals the driving force leaving due to this voltage. And now we would reach an equilibrium. And at that equilibrium, we would have a voltage of positive 55 millivolts. And this positive 55 millivolts is equal to sodium's equilibrium potential. So the equilibrium potential of sodium equals positive 55 millivolts. And essentially what this means is if we had those initial con that initial condition with high sodium outside, low sodium inside, and very negative voltage, if we were to open those channels, sodium would enter. And then eventually we would reach an equilibrium and once we've reached an equilibrium, the voltage inside, once we've reached that equilibrium, was positive 55 millivolts. And that's what an equilibrium potential is. Sodium has a positive 55 millivolts equilibrium potential. If we open these channels, sodium will flow, we'll reach an equilibrium, and once we've reached an equilibrium, it'll be positive 55 millivolts inside of the cell. And that's sodium's equilibrium potential. It's the potential, it's the voltage inside of the cell once that sodium has reached equilibrium.